the care is customized and reflects patient needs, values, and choices. Knowledge and information are freely shared between and among patients, care partners, physicians, and other caregivers. And care is provided in a healing environment of comfort, peace, and support. And family and friends of the patient are considered an essential part of the care team. So now not only is, are, are we informing and involving the patients, we are also informing and involving any families and friends that the patient wishes to have involved in their care. Patient safety is a visible priority in patient-centered care, and transparency, again, is the rule in the care of the patient. So, <clears throat> um, in theory, everybody is supposed to be able to communicate with everyone else across the care continuum to be able to transparently take care of the patient. And all co uh, caregivers cooperate with one, uh, one another through a common focus on the best interests and personal goals of the patient. And the patient is the source of control for their care. So um, there are several models out there under the Affordable Care Act, one of them being the shared decision-making model. Um, and that is a, a model for beneficiary engagement and incentive. So all of this, as you can see, uh, is under the umbrella of the Affordable Care Act. And again, CMS believes that if you have patient-centered care, you will um, drive your quality outcomes. And here is kind of an a illustration of that. So person-centered care, you treat that person with care, uh, with dignity and respect. That goals guide your care, not necessarily your interventions, but your goals. You, and your patient is a partner in all of the decision-making process. Um, that you still continue to perform evidence-based practices. So clinical best practices, including patient engagement, self-management support, and health literate care. So we have to understand their health literacy. And then we have coordination of care, seamless transitions across providers, settings, and times, and meaningful and timely information exchange. Improved outcomes leading to better health, better care, and low cost. That's what CMS that says if you provide this and do this integrated care management and that's uh, patient-centered care, you will um, have improved outcomes with better health, better care, and low cost. So let's get into the provisions. Um, there have been some definition changes. The subunit has been eliminated. So now if you have a subunit, you have to determine through CMS whether you're going to be a, a branch or uh, a parent. Uh, quality indicator is a new definition. It is specific, reliable, valid measure. A subdivision would be a component of a, a, a larger system, such as a hospital-based system. Supervised practical training is training in a lab or other setting. Verbal order is a spoken MD order, then transcribed. So we call verbal orders a lot of things in home care, but what when this talks about verbal orders, it's talking about specifically that order that you heard from a physician. Some things that were removed from the Previous COPs or current COPs is nonprofit home health agency. They're just calling it home health agencies, whether it's profit or nonprofit. Progress notes, which means your 60 day summaries have been eliminated. Um, subunit, supervision, um, will take on a different form. It won't be called the 60-day summary, and we'll talk about that when we get over to the care plan. 